Hello, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm doing a video on something I've never done a video on before, and that is a crossbow pistol. Now, this is supposed to be a Cobra crossbow pistol, but in all honesty, there are so many of them um, currently on the market that you can pretty much pick and choose whatever kind you want. Um, <clears throat> but this is basically going to be a review on this. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys, showing you how to put it together, how to string it by yourself, um, and kind of be going over the specs of it, and we're going to do some target shooting. So let's go ahead and kind of get into the actual review of it, of the pistol itself. Now, they have many different versions of this. I decided to get one that is all aluminum um, with just plastic scales because I wanted something that was a little bit more durable. Um, they do make them where they, they have, you know, plastic all the way down. But um, I decided to go with something a little bit, you know, a little more expensive and make sure I got something that was a good quality. So this entire thing, with the exception of these scales here, um, and I think this piece right here are all metal. Um, so basically weight wise it's not particularly light it's going to weigh in at about a pound and a half to two pounds it's not a um you know a light item the uh limbs brain just from blank there these limbs here are carbon fiber um they are not metal so um there is a risk when using limbs that are carbon fiber of them snapping um it does happen so when you're doing this, make sure that, especially when you're stringing it, you aren't bending the limbs too far and that when you are stringing it, you're bending both of the limbs evenly because I have seen people that try to string these and they'll just try to bend the one limb and end up snapping it right here because they aren't meant to bend that far. You gotta bend both the limbs at the same time. Um, and I'll be showing you guys how to put it, string it and put it all together from scratch um, out of the box so that you'll be able to do it on your own. Um, there is a trick to it, so I'll be showing you guys how to do that. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the actual design of the, uh, the crossbow itself. So this is a crossbow pistol. It is 80 pounds. Um, this is not going to be something that you're going to be using, um, you know, to deer hunt with. This is, you know, it is capable of hunting, but you're gonna be using it more so for small game or things of that nature. Or, you know, for people who are preppers and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, this would make a good uh, self-defense type weapon. Um, it, in my testing, it has a maximum range with the sights it comes with of 15 yards where you can get an accurate grouping. Um, that's about as far out as I've been able to push an accurate grouping with this crossbow with the iron sights that are on it. Um, it does come with a scope, or at least mine did. However, scopes on crossbow pistols, no. Um, that's just gimmicky crap to me. Um, I took it off and packed it away because honestly, the scope is worthless. Um, as far as the trigger pull on this goes, it has a pretty strong trigger pull. Uh, when it's cocked, it's not, um, it's not very smooth. That's one thing that I found to be an issue, which causes you to pull your shots a little bit. Um, I, it would be nice if it had a smoother trigger pull, but for $60 crossbow pistol, I mean, it, it is what it is. But uh, the trigger pull, for me, because of the way they have this set up right in there, that sharp box, um, causes the, the trigger pull to be very stiff, and then all of a sudden it'll let go. Um, <clears throat> which in, in my experience, um, like I said, it causes you to pull your shots a little bit. So I found the best way to deal with that is uh, when you're holding the pistol, I hold it by this bar here and I just gently squeeze on it until it pops. Um, it takes longer to pull off a shot that way, but it gives you the most accurate shot where if you just, you're gonna pull it and it's just gonna miss your target. Um, but, the, uh, the string that came with it, um, I was not all that impressed with. Uh, definitely look at buying a better string when you get it. The um, wrapping that was on this one came off like that, even though I waxed it, and that just gone. So I just unwrapped it, and I've been using it unwrapped um, because with the wrapping on it, it just shredded 
even when I was using wax on it. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, it is a cheap string, so if you really want to use it and you want to, you know, make it a, a fun thing that you're going to be using all the time, definitely get a better string for it. All right, so what else? Cocking the, the uh, crossbow is really, really easy. Um, even though it is 80 pounds, I found that everyone I've been able to hand this to has been able to cock it on their own without too much of an issue. Um, so to do that, there's a little button right here. You push this little button down and it releases the cocking mechanism right here. So it goes all the way down here into the base. So you're not gonna be able to hold it like this and cock it. What you have to do is you have to hold it right here. And I found the best way to do that is to put my thumb here, that there, and just pull straight back. Um, now I'm not gonna cock it because I don't have a, an arrow in there. Um, and as anyone knows, you don't leave a gun cocked or a pistol, a crossbow cocked, and you certainly don't fire dry fire it. So I'm not gonna do that right now. I will show you guys that in more detail when I do the target shooting. Um, the sights on here are acceptable. Um, I found that they are not as accurate as they could be. Uh, from 15 yards, I get a grouping about this big, um, which isn't too bad. Uh, you know, it's, it's good enough to take down small game, but it's not as accurate as it could be. So I'm thinking with the power this bow has, you could probably push it out to 20, maybe 25 yards accurately if you replace the sights. Um, I've seen people replace these with red dot sights. You can certainly do that. Um, just make sure that you're using the 3 8 rail instead of the uh, standardized size rail. So the rail that is on here is a 3 8 um, So make sure, you know, and you can't really replace it because there's stuff on here that goes through this rail that is necessary for the operation of the crossbow. So you can't replace the rail, but you can replace what goes onto it. Um, but I found that it is a 3 8 rail. It is not a standardized rail system. So you're going to have to use what would be considered a um, BB gun type sights. Um, you're not going to be able to use, you know, higher end sights that you put onto an actual weapon. Uh, but the sights themselves do elevation. Um, let's see how well you guys are going to be able to see it. They do elevation and they do windage. Um, but I, like I said, I found that they're accurate out to about 15 yards. You pass that point and your group just starts to exponentially spread. So I'm going to say, um, if you want to push out to, I'd say it's maximum effective distance is going to probably be about the 25 yard mark. Um, if you want to push out to that distance, you're probably, you're def, well, not probably, you're definitely going to have to switch out these sites for something that's more accurate. Um, the these sites just aren't stable enough they have a little bit of play in them um so you know they just they aren't accurate enough for any real accuracy out past 15 yards um but otherwise everything on here has uh, is holding up pretty well i haven't had any problems um the string hasn't popped on me i know some people say it has but uh my string the only thing that came off was the wrapping as soon as that came off everything else is holding up fine but it is still a cheap string, so you know, make sure that you do replace it if this is gonna be something you're gonna be using a lot because this string will eventually fail. It's just, it's, you, you can tell it's not a good quality string. Um, but I think that's about it for the uh, crossbow itself. Now, of course, they put this shiny copper-coated whatever on here because you know they wanna make it look fancy, but it's really nothing more than regular you know, stainless steel that's been made to look gold. Uh, <clears throat> but as far as the crossbow itself goes, I think that's pretty much it. That's um, all that I've really found about it so far. It's, you know, it's a good crossbow. It's, for the price, it's decent. It's certainly not uh, the highest quality thing you're gonna find, but it also isn't the cheapest, so it falls right in the midpoint there. Um, but it's pretty good, it shoots well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some target shooting with it and um, show you guys how to, how to put this thing together and string it yourselves, um, which is important because otherwise you will need two people to put it together and to string it. So I'm going to show you guys how to do all that on your own and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, uh, 
I have the crossbow disassembled. So when you first get it, so what you're gonna have, you're gonna have the stock, the limbs, and you're gonna get two rubber mats and a piece of metal that has a, uh, a dimple in it. Okay? So, essentially the way you do this, and it's a little bit annoying, but the way you do it is you put one rubber mat on the bottom in there, like that. You take your crossbow limbs and you feed them through. Why is that not going through there? Went through the first time. Raise that screw up a little bit. All right. So you feed your crossbow limbs through, but that little mat has to be underneath them. All right. Now, let me show you this before I put everything together here. It's going to have two white lines that have to line up with either side of the uh, opening here. Okay. So when you have it put together, it should look something like that. Now, I'm not, I don't have it lined up perfectly, but it should look kind of like that. You should have a little bit of a line on either side, nice and even. Um, kind of like that. And once you have those lined up, what you're going to do is take the other rubber mat and slide it on top of the limb to just, the, the rubber is there to protect your limbs so the metal doesn't dig into them. And then you're going to slide in your piece of metal. And you're going to even that up too. And you're just going to screw the screw in the front down, making sure the end goes into that little divot. Okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to ensure that your limbs are centered and everything is protected. So now we're just going to tighten that down. Now they give you an Allen key to do this with to tighten it. Um, but me, I just like using my surge, so that's what I'm using instead. And you really want to wrench this thing down. You don't want any play. Play is bad when you're dealing with crossbow limbs. All right, so now you've got this set up here. I've already got the little plastic caps put on the end um, of my limbs, but yours won't be put on there, so just snap them on. It's not hard. Just stick it on the end. Okay, so now that we've got those on, you have your bowstring. Now, I wax my bowstrings with uh, beeswax. Um, if you want to use actual bowstring wax and you know stuff like that, that's up to you guys. But at this stage, you need to wax it. So basically, the way I do that is I just take and I run it across the beeswax and just make sure that I get a good coating all the way across the string. Try to get all those little those fibers and everything. And what you're trying to do, I don't know if you guys can be able to tell, see that nice shine to it? That's what you're trying to achieve all the way through the string. And what that's going to do is it's going to help prevent your string from breaking. And I'm going to show you why uh, here in just a minute once I have this thing strong. Um, but the next step is to string it. So basically to do that, I came up with a little bit of a rig here. This is cord number two, or one, and this is cord number two. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the, the second cord with just two loops on the ends, one here, one there. You're going to put your crossbow string on so it's behind the puller, all right? You're going to take one loop and you're going to loop it over like that. And you're going to take the other loop and you're going to loop it over the same place here and you're going to pull the crossbow string through the loop too. All right? So it should look something like this. And that's how you're going to get the leverage to actually pull it back on your own and uh, be able to string the crossbow yourself. Now I'm going to take you over to where I'm going to do it and show you the second step in order to make this possible. All right, so I'll be so right I've already back. shown you how to get 
the first string set up so that you can actually pull the limbs back. The first string that I made was to actually hold the crossbow tied to this post. Um, that's going to give you the body weight, the leverage to actually pull back on those, those limbs. So the first thing I did was I made a loop on one side. Then I took, and about halfway down, and it's a pretty long piece of cordage, I tied another loop, and I left a piece of string coming out the other side, about a foot long. And I tied that extra foot into a nice big fat knot. And what I'm going to use, basically, is a button system. So this wraps around here and locks on like that to, to hold the string to the limbs. And the reason I'm doing that is because once it's strong, if you just tie it on normally, you won't be able to get the string off. Just pulling it off, you'd have to untie it. So the easiest way for me to do it was to take this loop here, wrap it around the limb, like this, take and push the other side with all the knots through that loop. Just like this. And um, what that's going to do is it's going to give you a loop that can be taken off. This loop here does the same thing, except I push it around behind the limb here. Take this loop, loop it around, and tuck that little knot through it. And then tighten it up. All right? So now you know how it's done. Let me go ahead and tie it to the post. What we're going to do is we're just going to take this, push it through behind the post, and then we're going to do a little knot. What that's going to do is it's going to let me attach this crossbow to the actual fence. Okay? Now it's time for the difficult part. So basically, what you're going to do and make sure this is stuck down in there, like that. And you're going to move these as far over to the ends of the limbs as you can get them to go. Okay, that gives you the most possible leverage. As soon as you put pressure on it, the crossbow will stay level on its own. So you put a little bit of pressure on it, move your paracord loops the farthest you can out to the sides of the limbs. That gives you the most amount of leverage. And then, just put your body weight into it. And you can get it strong. And this way, I can actually get this string off without having to untie everything. Just makes the whole process a lot easier. So there you are. Now you just slide these off, and you have a strong and assembled crossbow. So now that you guys know how to do that, I'm going to go ahead and do some target practice for you. Give you guys an idea for the accuracy. Now, like I said, I'm gonna do this from 15 yards so you can get an idea because that's out of the box as far as I've been able to get a, a decent grouping from it. So let me go ahead and get the, all that set up for you and I'll be right back.
Okay, tell me this. Get out of my line of fire. All right, so we just went ahead and we did the accuracy test. Now this was done from 15 yards. I shot 20 bolts um, into the target, trying to be as accurate as possible. It wasn't about speed, it was about you know how close could I group the bolts if I actually tried to. So this test that we have coming up right now is gonna be a, um, a speed test. It's not gonna be so much accuracy as it is going to be how quickly can you put the bolts down range. Now, because you have to at least be somewhat accurate in order to make the bolt worth shooting. We're going to make sure that we try to hit as close to that green circle as we can in the target. Um, but it's not going to be you know, as pinpoint precise. So that's going to be the uh, test coming up right now. And that is also going to be done for 15 yards and we're going to use 20 bolts again. So if you aren't curious about this, because I'm not going to fast forward anything, um, go ahead and skip it through this section. Um, because the next section is we're going to be shooting at the chicken. So you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and uh, take a look at this clip and uh, we'll be right back.
and welcome back. So you guys just watched the uh, speed test and that is basically, you know, we, we try to keep it as close to the, the center target as we could. We sprayed, a, you know, a little bit around. We pulled some of our shots, but, you know, we were trying to be quick about it. That's going to happen um, with any projectile weapon. So <clears throat> you guys just watched that test and hopefully you were able to get a pretty good idea of um, how quickly you were able to get the bolts down range. And if you actually time the number of bolts, and the length of time in the video, you know, for that section, you'll actually be able to tell how many bolts you can fire per, you know, per minute. Um, I'm not going to do that math. That's just not that important to me. I figured you guys would want to know. So if you, you know, you look from the start point and the stop point of that clip, and you time it, and then look at divide that by 20, it'll give you a good idea of uh, how many bolts per per minute. Um, so now we're going to do the chicken test, and this is basically a penetration test. Instead of using a water bottle or a soda bottle or any, you know, that kind of junk that people do typically use penetration tests for, we're actually going to use a thawed chicken. Now, I'm choosing this particular animal, uh, this type of, of target, because this is kind of where I think things are going to sit as far as the bow's ability to actually kill something. Um, now, based on previous tests I've done, I do feel comfortable shooting at a small bore. Um, I do think the penetration is high enough to actually kill that target, but if you are shooting at anything larger, like I would never shoot this at a deer, I would never shoot it at a large boar. Um, I think the the farthest this thing can go is going to be a 20 to 30 pound boar, and that's going to be about as big as I would go with this type of weapon. Um, anything bigger than that is out of, out of this weapon's capability. Um, you're going to want an actual hunting crossbow or you're going to want a, uh, a hunting recurve bow or something of that nature. You're not going to want um, this little crossbow pistol. Now, in the nature of Doomsday Apocalypse, absolutely, this thing will definitely help you at 15 yards. Um, but, you know, for regular hunting purposes, I would say stay to smaller games. So that's why I picked a chicken as my target because I think that's going to be about the size and density of animals that you're going to be hunting normally with this kind of crossbow. Um, so stick around. After that clip, we will go ahead and finish up this review, and uh, hopefully you guys will have learned whether this is or isn't worth it for you. So stick around. We'll be right back.
and we're back hopefully you guys were able to see that um you know the penetration of it normally it put the bolt straight through the chicken i did have several bolts that went just completely through it um and were on the ground covered in chicken juice um most of them went through one side completely and then ended up catching the uh, fletching at the end so the whole side of the bolt was sticking completely out of the chicken but the fletching just kind of stopped it and didn't allow it to go completely through. Now one thing that I noticed um, was how sharp the fletching was. I was a little bit hopeful that the fletching would help create a larger wound channel. Um, but I've done this test before and I kind of, I realized that the wound channel, it does create a small one, but it's not a significant wound channel. So it's not going to create, you know, a large hemorrhage surface. So as far as bow hunting goes, like I said, this is the reason that I would not, now that you've seen it, the reason I would not choose to use this against a, uh, a larger animal because you're not going to get the hemorrhage that you need in order to actually kill the animal humanely. Um, small animals like chickens and things of that nature or you know, like a small boar for example, you actually have an, a, a chance of killing them humanely. Um, so if you're in a survival situation or doomsday scenario, um, this is definitely going to be a good weapon to take out and actually quietly kill small game. Um, because the damage caused by the bolt is enough even without a huge wound channel. Um, but you're definitely going to want to go with broadheads or anything like that if you're going up against a, uh, a larger animal. And this bow simply is incapable of supporting that type of arrow. So unless you're making them yourself, for this crossbow, and you know how to make a crossbow bolt that can withstand an 80 pound flick um, without shattering, which takes some skill, um, I do not believe that this bow will ever be able to hunt anything larger than a small boar. And when I say small, I mean 20 to 30 pounds, you know, a, a small boar. I'm not talking about, you know, a 50, 60, 70 pound boar, just the small little ones. Um, anything bigger than that, and you're, you're going to be shooting at, a, at an animal and they are not going to die from it quickly enough. They might die um, and you might be able to find them but it's just it's not enough. You won't get enough of a blood trail. You won't get enough um, you know it'll make it harder to track them and they won't drop quickly enough so you'll be following this animal around potentially for days even weeks um, before they finally succumb. So from a humane you know a humane point of view it's just a really bad weapon to use against, you know, larger animals. Um, but with that said, uh, I will of course have this on the affiliate, you know, affiliate links to this, and I will certainly try to find it on all of the different countries that I support. There is a problem though in that things like this are heavily regulated based on your country. So I mean, I may not be able to find it in your country. I do apologize in advance. Um, if I cannot find this particular one, I will try to find one that's equal if they have it available at all. Um, but you know, just a little heads up, I will have affiliate links. I don't know because I'm just shooting the video now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it for you. If I can't, then uh, I do apologize, but it may simply be illegal where you live. Um, but there you have it. As far as bows go, I do find that it is a very accurate little, little crossbow. It is, you know, for its price, I don't think you're going to find something much better than this. Um, you know, coming in, I think I paid for this one, which is the deluxe model. Um, I think because I wanted the aluminum. I think it ran me about $60 all in total. Um, came with an extra bowstring, 39 arrows, you know, stuff like that. Um, but the, the baseline is going to run you about somewhere between 30 and 40. I'm not entirely sure. The prices go up and down. It's Amazon, so don't take anything I'm saying to heart because uh, the prices can rise and lower, it just depends. Um, but general price range wise, they're definitely worth the price. They do pack enough of a punch to easily hunt small game. Um, they are just really fun to shoot uh, and it's accurate. So it, from 15 yards, you, you're going to be able to hit whatever it is you're aiming at. Um, now I'm not going to say you can't, sh I doubt, I doubt you'd be able to sh hit a bottle cap off of a bottle, but you know, you might be able to pull it off if you get a good set of sights on it, but um, based on what I've seen, I've put probably five or 600 bolts through it now, and um, it can hit what you're aiming at, but the sights that come with it are junk. 
Now I haven't switched out the sights and what you saw was me using those sights but as far as um, the actual accuracy goes, the sights are probably the biggest problem this bow has as far as accuracy goes. So if you're really gonna use it and this is really gonna be something that you're gonna be using a lot, I would definitely highly recommend replacing it with a good set of sights, whether you replace it with a red dot sight or some better iron sights, um, replace it with some sights if you're gonna be using it a lot. If it's just a fun toy, then uh, you know just take out and clink then just leave the sights on the way it is. Uh, you don't need to spend any extra money for that. Um, the other thing that I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of, I think I've already mentioned it, is that the rail that comes on this is not a standardized rail. It is a, um, a what I call a BB gun rail. It is the, I think the 3 8 I think. Um, it doesn't fit standardized rail systems. So it's, it's the kind of, same kind of rail you get on a kid's BB gun. That's why I call it a BB gun rail. Um, so if, you know, if you've got actual sights for an actual weapon that you want to put on this, it's not going to fit. Um, you're going to have to buy sights more geared towards a BB gun. Um, but there you have it. I hope I hit everything. I hope that I was able to show you guys some stuff and you know, help you guys make your decision. Uh, that's pretty much why I do these videos. So hopefully I was able to pull that off. And as always, that's the end of this review. So remember, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.